Hello and welcome to the latest news from ITV Time Tees and Border. The Independent Police Complaints Commission has launched an inquiry into the circumstances surrounding the death of Raoul Mote. Mr Mote was rushed to Newcastle General Hospital early this morning after apparently shooting himself in the head following a six-hour standoff with police. He was confirmed dead in hospital. Well, Kenny Toll is at Northumbria Police Headquarters. Kenny, Rothbury beginning to recover now, but there's some serious questions to be answered, aren't there? Yes, as you say, many questions to be answered, but little chance of them being answered anytime soon by the police because of that IPCC investigation. The police making very brief statements at that press conference earlier on today. What we can confirm tonight is that two police officers known to have fired taser stun guns. Well, questions for this investigation will be why they felt the need to fire those guns and what part did they play in persuading Raoul Mote to pull the trigger and take his own life. What we can also confirm tonight is news we were not able to report earlier in the week because of media a blackout and that is of a dictaphone that was found in Raoul Mote's tent that contained four hours of ramblings during which he threatened to harm members of the public. He disclosed his upset and annoyance at how the media had reported certain facts and believed the police may have been involved in this. At this time he said the rules had changed and his threat had now moved to the wider public. Well, as I said, the media was given this information on Thursday. We agreed to a news blackout on reports of Mote's private life on his family and on his past. We were told that these were, and I quote, destabilizing factors on his mental state and that it was essential we treated him with respect. Well, we did. And then yesterday, at a police briefing that was screened live on a national network news channel, a community inspector read out a card from a member of the public that said this. To everyone that's trying to get this nutter off the streets, we would like to say thank you very much for putting your lives in danger to save ours. Well, temporary Chief Constable Sue Sim was latest then seen to, to smile. Uh, very embarrassing for this force. It quickly issued a public apology. Then later yesterday evening on the website Twitter, it sent out an urgent tweet saying that media reports were upsetting Moat during this standoff. Well, all of this and everything surrounding this death, as we said, now matters for the Independent Police Complaints Commission. Sources here say they will not be answering any questions until this investigation is completed. Philippa. Kenny, thank you. Well, uh, let's cross to Helen Ford now. She's been in Rothbury throughout today. Helen, the town must be regaining some sort of normality now. I must say there is a very subdued atmosphere here in Rossbury today. The focus of attention has been very much on the tent, which you can see behind me through the trees. This marks the spot where Raoul Moat shot himself at quarter past one this morning after that six-hour standoff. Rachel Bullock reports on the night's events. Keep moving, please, folks, for your own safety. 20 past seven last night and Raoul Moat is sighted on the riverbank in Rothbury. Armed police race to the scene, the area's cordoned off, the standoff begins. And here we see the man hunted for seven days, Moat dressed in grey, lying face down in a field holding a gun to his head. He's in the sights of police marksmen who finally have Britain's most wanted in their grasp. Residents are ordered to stay indoors while trained negotiators coax, urge, appeal to Moat to lower the gun from his head. For six hours, the painstaking negotiations continue. Moat accepts food and water from police. But then in the early hours after Moat is heard saying, nobody cares about me, a gunshot rings out in the heavy rain, followed by frantic police shouts. Moat shot himself, though it appears no officers fired guns, a taser was used. No police were injured. Paramedics swoop in and rush Moat down the A1 to Newcastle General. Moat is stretched in and pronounced dead, killed by his own bullet, a bullet which ends seven days of public and police fear.
Wherever you go in Rossbury today, one word is on everybody's lips, and that word is relief. It is tangible. At the same time, there is also a great deal of sadness that this huge police operation had to end in such a tragic way with yet another loss of life. Here's what local people had to say to us. It's relief. Really relief. And the police has been marvellous. Very, very sad. A human life's been lost, and I think that is very, very sad under the circumstances I think he could have maybe come through it and explained the reasons and faced the consequences. It's just a bit of a shame but you know I suppose it's got to come to an end you know it's, uh, it's, a, you know, it's, it's horrible to have it on your doorstep but you know that's what happens isn't it. It is remarkable, isn't it, that after that huge police operation across Coketdale, Raoul Moat was cornered right in the centre of Rossbury last night. Now, there is a theory that he may have used a culvert which stretches underneath the town as a hiding place over the last few days. Now, we have some pictures of one end of that culvert. As you can see, there are two individual tunnels. Now, the other end, which is close to the river, is one larger tunnel, and some people say this could have provided shelter for him. It's a question we may never know the answer to. It has been quite simply an astonishing week. That's it from the Tyne Teas and Border News team. Bye-bye.